Hey guys, welcome to Enzyme Mental. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button below and click the bell so you don't miss any notifications. Most of you know that I'm a big fan of niacin. I actually think it's one of the most beneficial nutrients we have available to us, and thankfully, it's extremely cheap. I've told you already about the many ways the consistent use of niacin dramatically slows the aging process, and today I wanted to tell you about another critical area of the body that that niacin, which is also known as vitamin B3, supports. Niacin, in its activated form nicotinamide, offers exceptional support for vision health. Specifically, nicotinamide inhibits the aggressive ocular cell transformations that occur following any kind of traumatic injury to the eye. So let's dive into how this happens. With aging, diabetes, and or any kind of ocular injury, cells in the retinal pigment epithelium, which is a layer that supports the retina, can transform into mesenchymal cells, which activate the fibrous membranes often seen in retinal scar tissue. Eventually, this can lead to retinal detachment. Nicotinamide, which again is niacin's active form, can inhibit and even reverse these cellular transformations and this alone can dramatically slow the progressive ocular erosion seen with conditions like macular degeneration. I've told you before about how niacin reduces inflammation by decimating classic inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein and lipoprotein A. While the progressive development of ocular fibrotic tissue is a natural pro-inflammatory healing response to aging and injury, this is also an example of invasive wound healing in which the body's natural response to such injury can unfortunately accelerate the inflammation from an already existing problem. You can look at this as the body's way of possibly overcorrecting or responding a little too heavily to a problem. Niacin inhibits this invasive ocular wound healing and scar tissue accumulation. You already know that there is such a thing as good inflammation and bad inflammation. This overcorrection and consequential scar tissue development is an example of such bad inflammation. This is one large factor in how niacin supports the eyes, but let's look at a few other niacin benefits that certainly come into play here. Niacin is the primary backbone for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, also known simply as NAD. NAD is one of the body's foremost restorative compounds, as it is literally the fuel for metabolic proteins like sirtuins and PARP1. Both sirtuins and PARP1 enzymes are essential for repairing DNA, mitochondria, telomeres, and overall reducing the speed of the aging process, and absolutely none of this can occur without large quantities of NAD, which unfortunately declines steeply as we grow older. This alone is what makes constant NAD replenishment via niacin supplementation so critical. Niacin also restores the intima, which is the interior lining of our blood vessels, and also promotes angiogenesis, or the body's creation of new blood vessels from older, damaged ones. This is particularly important for the body's immense network of its smallest blood vessels known as the capillaries. And as we all know, some of the body's smallest and most critical capillaries are in the eyes. There's no way we can discuss niacin without mentioning this revolutionary nutrient's most infamous side effect, which is a dilation of the blood vessels just beneath the skin. It looks like a systemic rash or a sunburn, and this is what we call the niacin flush. And even though it looks harmful and even extremely inflammatory, in reality, it's quite the opposite. So how can you take niacin? As I've told you before, the best results with niacin are seen with consistent, ongoing use, even with extremely small doses, like anywhere from 25 milligrams to 100 milligrams. I do advise people to start low and slow with niacin, so you can build your body's tolerance gradually. Sometimes you may even need to give your body as long as one or two weeks, or even longer, to fully acclimate to the dose you're taking. When you have acclimated, you will no longer flush at that particular dose. Then, at this time, you can step it up to a bit of a higher dose if you're comfortable with that. If the flush bothers you, make sure you're taking your niacin with a full meal, as food is the best buffer for the niacin flush. But you can also pair your niacin with vitamin C, quercetin, and MSM, as these can all help to reduce the itchy sensation of the flush, and all three of these things work very well with niacin. Also, it's important to note here that I actually do not advise people to take niacinamide, which is the alkaline, flush-free form of niacin. 
Niacinamide is far less effective and, in this case, adding injury to insult, niacinamide is far more expensive than niacin. More pertinent to the eyes, I would also consider taking some astaxanthin every day, which is a red-orange antioxidant compound well known for increasing ocular circulation. So take some niacin, feel the flush, and protect your eyes. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.